Hello. Hello. In this demonstration, we'll see how we can use hypergraph and speed up our post-processing uh, steps when dealing uh, with multiple iterations um, of the same model and avoiding to repeat uh, one after the user each of the steps for each signals. So let's have a look here our, at our signals. Uh, we see that we here have the results of one design of experiments, for instance, that has been run in HyperCD. And inside which of this run folder, we have this boxbeam T01, which is a radius input file, or output file, so we have a radius time history. So we want to uh, set in hypergraph one curve or for all the curves or from the 10 runs for one given signal. So how to do it quickly? There we will see two different scenarios. Scenario number one is that you just want to plot the curves without having to do any mathematical operation on it. So just want to plot them directly. So for this, we can go directly into hypergraph. Uh, here you see that I already selected my directory with uh, all the subdirectories that are here. So as a first step, I will define my filter, uh, looking for everything which, is, which ends by star T01 to make sure to capture only my uh, time history files. And then I move them to the right part. As a second part, and three, as a second step here, these 10 files, I will ask when loading them into hypergraph to make sure that to use, so you can set either as a prefix or a suffix, but you can set the directory level to um, as a prefix of suffix for each of these curves. So now let me click on select and move to the multiple inputs. Uh, sorry, one side of this, I can move to the Y source tab by default, we set X source at the time, but you could change this, for instance. Let's say that we keep this X signal as time, and as Y source, for instance, you can say that you want your internal energy, you want your kinetic energy as a magnitude for each one, and what you want is one curve, one plot per request. So request is what is there. So one plot per request, one plot per component is this column. One curve per plot is uh, this window. And you can also organize by one plot per file. Let's go for one plot per request. And you could also decide of how many uh, windows you want to the, in, to the same page. But for the timing, let's say one plot per request. And let's click on plot. Here you have this small pop-up with the units. You can define them if you want, if you're interested later uh, on uh, by some unit conversion. So I will keep them as uh, default. And you see now that I have one plot for the internal energy. And as I kept this one, I have another plot for the kinetic energy. If I want to have both of them in the same page, I can basically ask for a new page here. And in that case, say that I have two signals, I want window on the same page, and if I hit on plot, you will see both the internal and the kinetic energy in the same window. So this is great if you just have to, this is a quick quest way, by the way, if you just want to plot your signal without any processing, uh, this is a quick quest way to uh, overlay several curves uh, in the same plot. So if you are dealing with such scenario, uh, yeah, go for this direction. This is really the, the fastest way to do it.
Let's have a look now at the second scenario. So for this second scenario, we're just we're not just plotting the curves um, almost on the fly. We have created a full post-processing session with three pages. So let me describe you briefly the content of this post-processing session, and let's see how uh, we can work with this post-processing session, leverage it, and reuse it on other um, curves, other uh, output files. So on page one, um, I have created a energy balance plot with internal energy, kinetic energy, contact energy, and total energy, which is the sum of the three above. So as my intent after a while is to overlay iterations in the same window, I set the four curves with the same color, but then change the line style to distinguish the four of them. Now on page two, what I did was to compute acceleration. If I expand here into the um, plot window, my page two, what you can see is that uh, on page two, I started from vector x equal time and vector y equal velocity. And then I applied two operations, one SAE filter in order to smooth the velocity because it was really noisy and then a derivative in order to get the acceleration. And once I get the acceleration, so maybe I can change here a little bit the position, a few of the nuts. But once I got the derivative, I created two nuts, one at the maximum and one at the minimum. So for creating the nuts, you just have to get on the nuts and if you want to pick the max, make sure that you see uh, when you hover your mouse uh, on the curve that you have the nut to be created which starts with max. If you have Y, you're not at the max. If you have wax, the max, sorry, you reach the maximum. Here you have the maximum. So I created this to want and if I get a little bit into the details, here you see that the attachment point for this first note is index of max of c1.y and what I did is I slightly changed the default label by doing max acceleration equal y so everything between curly brace is complex and will, it will be evaluated in dynamically so here I ask for the y value at the maximum just gave the information of the unit and then for the x value instead of showing time in seconds I multiplied the x value by 1000 and then I changed the format in order to display it as a floating with two digits only and this everything between curly brace with a comma between the mathematical operation and the format I did the same for the minimum acceleration. And on page three, I have another signal, which is a rigid wall force. And uh, as for the velocity, I applied a SAE filter in order to uh, smoothen it. Now, how can I leverage uh, this post-processing session? By opening from the view the parameter browser and you will get this kind of parameter so now let's start with acceleration and rigid wall force what I want from these two is to pick the curves and if I pick my curves I can say that the name of the two curves here will be my parameter and then I will do the same for page one, except that I need to create one parameter here for uh, each of the curve. So here I will add one parameter because as I have four curves into the same window, I cannot define them with the exact same 
um, parameter name. And as a last configuration of parameter, I will select the six here um, curves and I will ask for the line color. Now, what I can do is to save a post-processing template. So let's click my post-processing template. And just as a matter of information, if you as a text editor, you will retrieve on top of the TPL file your T015, which is your first parameters. And when you save flexible reports, you always get access to your input files and then all the parameters who are defined. Now, how to use this parameter? Let's come back to hypergraph and let's go to file, load our file session, sorry, flexible reports. So for the sake of the demonstration, let me purge and reopen my post-processing template. And here you retrieve all your parameters. So now, it's, now let's say that we want to look at run two. I just have to change the number here and change the ID within my different parameters. So I'm using the tab tool. Uh, the tab key in order to go from one field to the other and uh, I will keep the use report colors but I will change here my color to another color and um, I will keep the overlay mode which means that the new curves will be plotted in the same window that the existing one. I could have asked for appending which means that in that case I keep my three existing pages out there and I append three new pages after or I could replace. Let's go with overlay and let's click on apply. And here's the result. You see the result for iteration two being plotted in the same window that for iteration one for the energy balance for the acceleration and for the rigid body force. Now let's say that, let's come back to, sorry, the GUI of the flexible reports and then say, okay, but I don't want to eat every time. What you can do now is go to view HWC console. So, HWC is a kind of journal file for Hyperview Hypergraph and you can retrieve some information. So especially these two information here, let me copy and paste them into a new window. Okay. Sounds like I copied twice the same line. So. Let me remove this. So, first line is about opening the TPL file, the flexible report, and then you overlay um, the template with the new file. So now I could say, okay, I want job number. So for this one, I think I made. I was wrong into my copy paste. Let me try to. Control C. Okay, this is my iteration too. So now I can say that I want to my run three and it will be my iteration three. So let me search and replace iteration two by iteration three. Replace all. And I could even take all my line here. So let me take and just copy paste it coming on the 
line and now let's say that I want to replace iteration 3 search replace by iteration 4 replace all I will make sure to change my job which is job number 4 and I will change the color so the colors are changed by the last number here so I don't have in mind all the clothes but let's use let's say for instance 22 and 23 and now let me copy this three line control C let's come in the command here clear it paste the three line hit enter and I get a pop-up twice and you see that I have okay so this is the same color for the two so maybe I did not use the correct colors but you see that you can quickly load in such a way so different to the different curves into your session so yeah if you're in the second scenario of having to do a lot of operations on one signal before on one output file and then to replicate it it is better to go with a flexible report and then to to apply either as an overlay mode or an append mode.